David Wygant, 10 minute daily reality check, last one of 2017. Goodbye. Good riddance, Sayonara. 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 You know, you guys never make fun of me when I mispronounce words. Um, I appreciate that. I haven't seen that in the YouTube comments yet. Feel free to do that. I make fun of myself and I know how to poke fun of myself. Same old lens eye. What is that song they sing? Na, 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 na. You know, I can't even remember it because it's been a year since I've heard it. Goodbye, 2017. So what was 2017 like for you? Do you do a year in review? Is there a something that reminds you of 2017? Is there something special? Was there a huge lesson you learned? Was it one of your better years? Was it an average year for you? As we have just this day left to reflect, I can tell you 2017 started off with a lot of promise and a lot of hope. Because that's what a year seems to always do. It gives us the illusion that things are going to change. And I've talked about that a lot this week, that we seem to have this illusion that a year is going to change. The calendar changes so we think everything is new and fresh. It's a, it's a way to trick our human minds. We trick ourselves to believing that things will be different. But in reality, you're just carrying everything forward. You're still the same fucking person. You just because you go to bed on a Sunday night and wake up on a Monday and it's January doesn't mean anything really changed at all. Nothing does. Nothing ever changes unless you actually make changes, and changes are things that you implement on a daily basis. So it doesn't matter if it's January 1, December 14th, November 8th. A change can happen whenever you decide to make that change happen. That's what's so powerful about the human mind. Every day is really New Year's. Every night could be New Year's Eve. That's actually a song. I don't remember that song. It might have been like a Sheryl Crow song or something. So what are you doing tonight? Me, I'm spending the day with my daughter, and we're going to do daddy-daughter things. Depends on what she feels like doing, because kids are selfish. And um, dragging her to do things I like to do rarely happens. So the world revolves around you when you're seven. So if I asked her what her year interview was, she would just tell you that the year revolved around her. And it's exactly what kids are all about. That's what childhood is about, and being a parent is a very selfless thing. So today, I don't know what we're going to do. It depends when I pick her up, what type of mood she's in. Lately, she hasn't been feeling good. So she could be in a rotten mood. And by the time I pull her away from her mother, which is always funny, do you know that when I get her from her mother, she will cling on to her mother and when she's sick and she'll be like, I don't feel good. Well, that's about the best mimic voice I can do. And she'll literally, I don't feel good, daddy. And she'll hold on to her mom. And then finally, after about a half an hour, I'll get her away from her mom. And then about one minute later, she's bouncing around, running around, and she's totally healed. What is it with children and their mothers? I remember when I was with my mom when I was younger. And when I was feeling sick, I would hold on to her leg. I would cry. I would feel all upset. I'd be like, Mommy, I don't feel good. And then the minute my mom would leave, I'd be bouncing up and down on my bed. And then the minute mom would come back, I'd start aching all over again. Is it because mothers chase you around the room with a thermometer? That's what my mother did. And those were the days when the thermometer went up your ass and gave you a prostate examination. I remember my mom would come in with a jar of Vaseline, a thermometer, and I'd always run under the covers and think to myself, there's no fucking way you're sticking that thin thing up my little kid ass right now because it doesn't feel good. You got to love the 60s and 70s. Let's shove a thermometer up a kid's ass. Nowadays, it's just this thing that you scan across the forehead and it magically tells you your temperature. I think one of the things about mothers is that mothers are always taking their kids' temperature and dads are not. So mothers are always making their children so aware that they have fever. Yup, you got 100. Oh, yeah, you got 100. 98.6, by the way, is your regular temperature. So you've gone up 1.4 degree, but you got 100. And kids just freak out. No, no, mom, I can't believe I have 100. Well, I never take my temperature. Any of you take your temperature? I never do. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. There's nobody's legs I clean on, cling on to. I just kind of deal with it. But kids, well, they're precious. So I have no idea what I'm going to pick up today. Hopefully she's over whatever she has so we can have a really cool and fun 
daddy-daughter day. It's also the last day of the NFL season. Well, that's great. What type of season was this? Well, it was a season that I lost my football championship, my fantasy football championship, because somebody had Todd Gurley and I didn't. It's been an interesting season. I can't make a prediction. All I can tell you is that whoever New England plays in the Super Bowl, they're going to destroy because the NFC does not have one championship caliber quarterback except for Drew Brees. If the Patriots play the Saints, that could be an interesting game. Otherwise, I do not see an interesting game. So 2017 is over. Tonight, you're going to be running around. You're going to be looking for that great party. Remember, keep in mind, it's amateur night. You cannot make up for 364 other nights in one night. It never, ever happens. New Year's Eve was always my worst night of the year. I remember going to parties and I remember always thinking to myself, why the fuck am I here? Who are these people? And why do I need to go find somebody to kiss at midnight when I'm not attracted to anybody? And then I remember just wanting, running around New York City trying to find the perfect place to have midnight. And sometimes I'd be stuck on a subway train as midnight struck, which turned into be one of the better ways of celebrating New Year's. How was your year? What was your highlight? One of the things, so you're able to have a better 2018, because we're always looking and seeking self-improvement, is to write down your wins, write down the wins of 2017. Write down the lessons that you had in 2017 and write down your losses in 2017 and what you learned from those losses. Don't go into victim mode. Don't go into poor me mode. Write down exactly what happened to you. What did you learn? What lessons kept coming up for you in 2017 and how are you going to change that in 2018? I know there were lessons of mine that came up in 2017, and in 2018, I am going to literally squash the shit out of low vibrational people. If you listen to yesterday's podcast, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. None of those are allowed in my life, nor will I ever go down and battle a low vibrational person ever again. I learned a valuable lesson in 2017. I actually went down to somebody else's level. I took on a low vibrational person, and I played a low vibrational game. And I realized that you can't win it. So how do you go about learning from that lesson? Very simply, you acknowledge that you're dealing with somebody who's beneath you and below you, and you squash the shit out of them with your power and your strength. So what is and what are some of your goals for 2018? Write them down. Don't write down a hundred goals. Write down a few Because whatever you're working on now is the first resolution or the first intent that you need to have for the new year. I don't believe in resolutions because resolutions resolve something. And life is a constant resolution and resolving of things. Because every day we're resolving something else that comes up. So what is your intent? What are you working on right now? And what is your intent that you'd like to carry forward? What great lessons did you learn? And how are you going to take that intent and literally manifest it throughout 2018? Remember, as you say good riddance to 2017 tonight, each day that arises, each day that welcomes you, is another day to have a new experience. The past is the past. The present is all you have, and the future is a mystery. If you remain present every day in 2018, you're going to have a whole different reality. And that's what today's rally is all about. Spread it, share it, and let other people know that if we all get together and become present, we'll all have a different experience in 2018. Enjoy the last day of the year. And tonight, Don't bother chasing a party. One night does not make up for an entire year's worth of boring or bad nights. And for all of you that had the opportunity to work with me this year, all my clients, all the growth that we did together, I want to thank all of you for allowing me into your life. And for those of you that have already signed up for 2018 in my six-month mentorship program and in my other coaching programs, I look forward to fully supporting you because that's my intent, to be the best damn coach for all of you. My other intent, I'll tell you about tomorrow. 
I'll tell you about some of my intents for 2018 that I'm rolling forward with. But my intents are things that I practice every single day. Happy New Year's Eve. And Happy New Year to all of you.